Good afternoon. Um, we're here to talk about currency. Um, my name's Liz Rowlinson. I'm editor of Place in the Sun magazine, a property journalist for 20 years. Um, and But actually, I don't really get involved in um, money and currency too often. So I'm going to really look forward to learning a lot through um, questioning my colleague, Robin Haynes. Can you, Robin, t tell us about a Place in the Sun dot currency briefly. Hi. Yes, good afternoon. Good afternoon, Liz. Good afternoon, everybody. Um, so we are a specialist currency company and we help people exchange uh, their pounds for euros if you're buying in France and help you with all your money transfers um, to actually send your funds across for purchasing your property. So we're a specialist broker. That's all we do. Um, so we're here for all your money movements. Brilliant. When did you, when did the, when did you start with this, this element of place in the sun? Was it a, about two years ago? Uh, yes, it was in 2018, uh, so the A Place in the Sun team uh, wanted to have a, a dedicated currency service to help all their um, users and everyone who goes to the exhibitions and on the website and, and readers and so on, uh, and TV viewers of course, um, to have a dedicated service. There are obviously lots of uh, different companies you can use for, for sending funds abroad, uh, or of course you can use your bank. Um, but I think the, uh, the idea behind this was to have a, a specialised service just for people buying property abroad where we really could add value and, and help people out through that whole process. Brilliant. And before I ask you uh, uh, the first thing I'm dying to ask, um, if anyone's got any questions, um, ping them over in the Q&A section on the screen and we will get to them um, a bit later in the session. Um, but basically, Robin, yeah, I mean, I... When I got a, a pile of money a couple of weeks ago, I went to the post office. I mean, why, why, why should you use you instead of um, going to a bank or um, you know anywhere else for the for, for transferring money, getting getting foreign currency? Yeah, well, two reasons really. Um, one is uh, the savings that we can offer. So um, exchange rates are different from different suppliers, and that's whether you go to your bank uh, to send some money, whether you go to the post office to change some cash. Uh, exchange rates are not are not set in stone, so different providers have different margins and different rates uh, on the same day. So the main reason to, to use companies such as the Place in the Sun currency is that typically our exchange rates will be anything up to two or three percent better than you'll get from your high street bank. And obviously, for sending a large amount, uh, that can equate to, to quite a significant saving. Uh, and the second reason uh, is, of course, service as well. So um, typically your average bank clerk uh, won't know too much about um, sending money abroad. They'll know how to fill the form in, but they won't know um, the, the importance of timing. They won't know the banking system in France. They won't know about charges. Um, in short, they're not uh, an expert at, at that exact transaction. And, and so by offering a, a personal service um, from experienced people who, who do this day in, day out, we can actually make your life easier um, and, and save you that long and uh, not much fun trip to the bank. Sure. And is there a minimum amount which really is, is sort of feasible in terms of the, you know, the charges that you obviously um, add to it? Um, yeah, I mean, we will send uh, any amount for people. So anything from someone who might be sending a couple of hundred pounds a month to, to pay for ongoing bills up to sending several hundred thousand pounds um, to, to buy a property if you're lucky to be in that particular boat. Um, so we don't have a minimum. Obviously, larger amounts, uh, the saving comes in a, a lot more. So if you're only sending uh, a relatively smaller amount then might only save you a few quid if you're sending a large amount it might be a few thousand um, but we tend to find once people have used the service for buying their property it's so simple and, and efficient that they'll use us for smaller amounts even though the, the saving might only buy them a couple of baguettes in those cases but I mean, as you say, I mean, I mean, the saving can equate. I, I hear this so many times from buyers that they use a currency broker and the saving might have been 10,000 euros or 15 on a property. And that is basically their furniture covered or, or whatever. So it, it's definitely worth it. Absolutely. Yes. I mean, banks vary. So we can't ever say uh, that we're providing an, an exact saving. But most of the time, um, our clients will ring. Uh, the bank and ring us compare rates and yes sometimes the saving can be can be you know into five figures um on, on, a, on a property purchase so it's certainly something that people shouldn't just assume oh i'll go to my bank and send the money 
um, because that's easy and, and exchange rates are all the same. You know, neither of those are true. Uh, it's not usually very easy to use your bank and you very often will get a, a poor exchange rate and be paying more than you need to. And basically buyers should get you on board really early on, shouldn't they? Because um, as soon as they have to start setting up a bank account in France, um, because maybe they want to get residency as well and, and get, get all things, their ducks in, in a row, um, but they, you, you can, they might need to make payments before that. They might need to pay, pay for the property itself. And then ongoing, they need, they'll need to pay utilities, running costs, etc. won't they? Yeah, absolutely. I think um, we'd always advise getting in touch uh, early in the process. And uh, as you say, the reasons for that are there'll, there'll be lots of ongoing requirements uh, throughout the whole process. But the more important thing actually is that the more time that you have and the more research you do, the better chance you've got of getting a, a good exchange rate as well. Because if you just leave everything to the last minute when you actually need to transfer funds and do it all in a panic uh, with a couple of days uh, to go, for example, before your deposit, you're stuck with whatever the exchange rate happens to be on that day. So once you are starting to look at going on, on viewing trips um, and looking at really researching in detail, I think that's a good time to start speaking to uh, someone about currency and exchange rates because it's important to know which way the rate's going, what might be happening uh, with exchange rate movements, uh, and that can help you plan and budget rather than uh, just leave it until you, you need to make your transfer, which may end up being a lucky or unlucky time. Yes, you've hit the nail on the head with this unlucky or lucky time. I mean, um, can you explain how, you know, I mean, if I'm thinking of buying um, uh, later, in, later in the year, I haven't quite got out there, etc. Um, why might it be good for me to buy my current or you on my behalf buy the currency now? I mean, or not, because I know the, the actual, I know the pound is, is pretty much at quite a low at the moment since um, uh, Boris started making a mess of the <laughs> Brexit chat. So what, what, when, when do you, you know, when do you buy? When it's high and then how does it work? Well, ideally, yes. I mean, the, the problem is, of course, nobody has a crystal ball. Um, and it's very, a common mistake people make is to assume, well, the rate's quite low, so I'll just wait for it to get a bit higher again. Um, and of course, that might, might not happen. Rate can drop further. Uh, Brexit talks might uh, get even more tricky between now and uh, the, the deadline we seem to have imposed in a month. Um, COVID is not a good thing for the economy and the pound either. So if we have further, further problems there, um, th there are unfortunately still things that could potentially make the rate go lower. Uh, but of course, all those things might end up being resolved and we might end up with a, with a much better exchange rate in a month or two. So I think instead of trying to, to predict um, what is going to happen, because nobody can, it's better just to understand those risks and what effect they might have on your budget. And then what we would do is work with individual clients on an individual basis, depending on their time, budget and, and kind of risk um, aversion uh, to try and help them decide when to buy their currency. So. Uh, there's no no standard answer for that. Everyone's different. Everyone uh, has a different view on, on what might happen. But I think um, certainly it's worth talking to us or, uh, about the potential impact of all these events to, to make sure you don't get caught out uh, by, by doing the wrong thing. Um, and as you said, is you can fix a rate up to two years ahead. So if you've got a, a deposit you're paying um, and then a completion typically in, in two or three months time, if you're worried about the exchange rate dropping between those two events, then you can fix a rate for some or all of your completion amount. So it's again, another tool we can offer to help people manage that risk to the exchange rate moving. Yeah, you mentioned tool and I think I've, uh, is, is that called a stop limit or something you just mentioned? Uh, that's, that's just a forward contract. So a forward, forward contract, contract is where you say, I need to buy X amount of euros in two months time. Um, I haven't got all my sterling yet because I'm waiting uh, for a property to sell here, uh, but I'd like to secure my rate. And that's, the, that's a forward contract. So you know then in advance what you're paying for your completion in pounds, even though the completion's in euros, uh, and you know exactly how much sterling you've got to find for that. So we're finding a lot of people doing that at, at the moment with all the uncertainty. Um, and it's certainly a way of, of taking the, the exchange rate movement out of your transaction. And what are the other tools? Because I, I seem to remember there's also uh, another couple of key tools that you use um, with, for, with customers. 
Yeah, absolutely. So um, the the other things we can do offer a stop loss or, or a limit That's order. Right. So yeah. these are getting a, a little bit um, slightly more technical, but essentially they allow you to set a, a target exchange rate uh, or a worst case exchange rate. So if you've got a, a particular budget and you say, well, I can't afford for the exchange rate to drop below X, we can put an order into the market to automatically buy your currency at that rate if the market drops further. So that can protect you from, from things getting any worse than, than your worst case for your budget. Uh, and likewise, the other way around, a, a limit order is when you say, well, actually, my ideal rate that I really would like is, is Y. Um, please, can you buy my euros for me if the, the market improves and you're able to buy at a certain rate that isn't yet available? So there, there are two other, other things you can do to set uh, the parameters for your best and worst case rate and therefore your best and worst case cost for your property. And, and yeah, increasingly people are using those as well at the moment, given um, the amount of uncertainty uh, that we're seeing. Okay, and on the subject of forward contracts you were just talking about, Nick Bold asks, if I bought a forward contract today, do I need to um, do I need the full amount now or later? And later, what would I need to pay now if, if it was later? Yes, uh, so the forward contract we asked for a 10% deposit at the time you secure the rates, excuse me, and then the 90% balance you pay when you want your euros in a couple of months' time. So it's a, typically a 10% deposit. We can sometimes reduce that if it helps uh, with managing cash flow, depending on the circumstances. But uh, that, that's the, the good thing about the forward contract is you're not without all your money for those couple of months. You're only without 10% of your money. Um, and then when you settle the contract, we can then obviously make the transfer of, of your euros. Um, typically, that will be directly to a notaire as well. So we don't, you don't need a French bank account set up to use all these tools. We can send funds directly to your notaire, uh, your property agent, your other suppliers that you might be using as well. Okay, and uh, Yoga Schmita sort of slightly reiterates a question I had at the beginning about the minimum amount that you deal with. Mm -hmm. For instance, if he's going on a viewing trip, um, yeah. which a lot of people are planning. I mean, yes, yeah, so let's take let's take five hundred pounds for instance. I mean, would you? Uh, uh, yeah, you could. You maybe you're going on holiday. Would you? Would it be worth you using you for that? Uh, well, we don't we don't deal in cash so if you're looking for for money to actually travel with um, we can't help right. uh, we only will only have bank transfers but if you happen to have a French bank account already open you need to send a few hundred pounds as a one-off transfer yes of course okay and um, Samantha Hain has a really interesting question about the subject of leveraging and why taking a mortgage with uh, can sort of insulate you from ex, you know the the, the 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 exchange rate. So she says, would it be therefore better to have a French mortgage at the current low rates instead of transferring a large cash sum into the current rate? I mean, I know you're not a mortgage person, but that makes sense, doesn't it? Yeah, it does. I mean, that's um, that's something that um, you can use as a strategy. So if you're taking out a French mortgage um, in euros, but your income is, is still in sterling or you've got a lump sum of sterling, then, of course, you'll be drip feeding euros each month uh, across an exchange of money every month over a number of years. And that will average out your exchange rate risk. So if the pound improves in the coming years, um, you'll be paying less for those euros each month than, than you might be at the beginning. Um, the flip side of that, of course, is that, that over, over time that, that exchange rate is unpredictable. So you don't really know in, in five or 10 years what your monthly payments are going to be. Um, but yeah, that is something that, that you can consider doing to borrow money in euros, pay it back monthly, um, assuming that at some point um, the, the pound will improve. Okay, a couple of questions about cancellation sort of subjects if you set up a forward contract and then your plans change can you get out of the contract asked roberts hammersley yes of course uh, absolutely the uh, it depends what the rate is at the time uh, as to whether that will cost anything so if you fix an exchange rate um now and then in three months for whatever reason your plans fall through you've paid us your 10 percent deposit um that 10% deposit really just covers any movement of exchange rate in the intervening time. So if the rate were to go up a couple of percent in that time, you might lose the, the difference between the value of the currency at the beginning and the end. 
uh, if the rate falls in that time, then then you'd get your full deposit back. So it, it's um, something we would work out. Obviously, we understand that plans change and, and things um, sometimes don't work out. So we would uh, work and uh, work out the, the best way for an individual case to uh, to sell that contract back. Um, sometimes, of course, um, you might still be intending to buy and you might decide to keep the euros and, and say, well, actually, um, I'm still going to buy a property. It's been delayed. It's fallen through, but I'll buy it. I'll keep my euros and, and, and use them at a later date so we can do that as well. So there's, there's various options if, if plans change, of course. Yeah. And I mean, um, presumably with the with the um, with the currency being so sort of up and down, um, you, you, you must be quite busy at the moment in terms of people really uh, becoming aware of why they might they should use you. I mean, there's no reason not to use a currency broker, is there? Um, there isn't really. No. Um, I mean, it's very safe and secure. We're FCA regulated. Um, we have safeguarded bank accounts, uh, UK based with UK banking. So, um, you know, it's an industry that perhaps 15 years ago uh, wasn't quite as, as reputable as it is now. Um, but in terms of day to day, you know, we're moving money in and out for people on a large scale every day. Um, we're specialists in what we do. So there's no, there's no reason not to, to speak to a currency broker. And I, I would certainly suggest if anyone's wary about doing it, then certainly give us, give us a ring, have a chat, compare the rate with your bank. Um, any worries that anyone does have on security and, and service and so on check check our reviews check the regulation and, and really there's no, no reason at all not to use a currency company the bank's relying on you just using them because you don't go elsewhere and that's why they get away with giving uh, poor exchange rates most of the time yeah i think it, it's it's often just a question of people not really really realizing what you do and i think that's that's yeah. actually changed over we, we're trying to, to sort of make people aware okay that's a really good point um so I've got a question for you um, from Richard Powell. He, uh, Powell. He has a large amount of money in a savings account and we're hoping to exchange on our house shortly. Exciting. Therefore, we wouldn't have the full amount of money for our purchase in France. Would it be good to exchange the money saved now and then when we've exchanged to move the rest at a later date? Uh, yes, I mean, that, that certainly, I, I would always suggest um, a good way to do it because if you even if you did have all your money available, actually, if, if you're sending a large amount, um, then by splitting up your transaction into two or three tranches, you actually are going to, again, even out your exchange rate risk. So I think the worst thing we ever hear from people is, oh, I've exchanged all my money at the wrong time, just when the rate was, was at its worst. And then nobody knew this, could have known this would happen, but then it improved. So I think even if you have all your money available, actually, by splitting it into two or three tranches, that's a very sensible way of, of kind of spreading the risk on, on exchange rates. So that, again, is something we would, would work on an individual basis with, with clients um, to understand when their funds are coming in, what they have available when, and try and work out the best way uh, for them to manage that risk. So, yeah, I think in that particular case, absolutely, yes. Yeah, that's a good point about not doing it all at once. Cause the same yeah. reason that uh, people, wealthy people sort of keep their money in, um, in different countries, in different currencies, isn't it? Because it's just sort of spreading the, spreading the risk, really. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it depends on, on individual circumstances. I mean, if, if your budget is tight and you can't really afford for the exchange rate to drop, then often you probably need to exchange all your money just in case uh, things get worse and you, you, you end up in... In a sticky situation but if you have a little bit of leeway then um i think yeah splitting it into to, to lump sums is, is a very good way of doing it brilliantly and um just to um uh, we did touch on this early but sally alam asked you know what are the costs for using your services well you, you touched on that earlier didn't you but to repeat uh yeah well there's no fees or commissions uh we actually make a small margin on the exchange rate which keeps the lights on in the office um so the rate that we would quote for, for your transfer is the rate you get there's no percentages to take off or, or fees to add um we simply work on a, a much smaller margin than than a bank would work on so that's where the saving is but obviously um the the business has some income it's just that that we offer a much better deal so that's where we make our money um and that's how you make your saving brilliant and at the moment is is most of your business sort of doing 
pounds to euros um or is uh, you do what about us i mean what's 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 the sort of big thing yeah well certainly at the moment yeah eurozone is is the busiest uh there were a lot of people who want to buy before the 31st of december for obvious reasons um and i think despite quarantine and despite travel restrictions uh we are seeing a lot of people very determined just to to get their purchase over the line um so yes we despite the, the rate not being fantastic at the moment there's there's certainly a, a feeling that people just want to get on with it and, and get it done um because who knows where we'll be next year obviously you'll still be able to buy next year but it is some uncertainty there are some unknowns uh, about whether that's going to be harder or easier uh so we are busy um and not too busy to help any new inquiries anyone who wants to ring us for a chat just around what you're doing and what you're looking to do we're very very happy just to have a friendly chat on the phone yeah it's all about the preparation which um these sessions are about i mean yeah. are, are there any current just just are there any currencies that the pound is actually quite strong against <laughs> not really at the moment <laughs> <laughs> if i want to buy a house in um you know borneo or something yeah, you, am i going to get a good rate <laughs> you could probably find somewhere a bit further afield that's one for me to research um but I mean, actually, the dollar is isn't uh, the pound against the dollar hasn't fallen as much as it has against the euro. So we there are probably it's not quite as bad uh, for for dollar buyers. But um, you know, the euro rate is is not lower than it was at the beginning of lockdown. Um, I think there'll be lots of volatility over the next two or three months. So for anyone who is looking to buy, um, do get in touch with a currency company. Let them know you're looking because we can alert you if the rate suddenly shoots up because. Or is there something good, um, or there are some breakthroughs, or some potential breakthroughs in in Brexit? Then there, there may well be opportunities in the next two or three months to secure a better rate. Uh, and if we know that you're looking, and we know that you'd like to be listened to that, we can help you um, hopefully get the best rate through this this tricky time. And is that what? And is that what happens? That you know, watching um, if someone's watching the news, something happens, then you get the phone just starts going and um, because people realise the significance of it. Yeah, certainly. I mean, whenever there's there's movement, we we're busy. So whether the, if the rate suddenly jumps up, um, we have lots of happy people on the phone. If the rate suddenly starts sliding back, then we have lots of less happy people on the phone. Um, but uh, it, it does create a, a bit of a a slight sort of panic when the exchange rate moves so when it's actually when the rates start stable that's probably the best time to do your research and, and think about it and look at it because you're not then reacting to what's going on around you so uh, again i can only advise talk to a currency company early understand what's happening um and do your research nice and early and, and know what what's going on and that really will help you plan and budget yeah, and but basically people have to buy when it suits their their own sort of life. Um, they, they don't generally buy um, unless they're investors. They don't generally buy when to do with um, exchange rates, really. No. So um, we've got to close up now. But um, but basically, um, lots of scope to book a uh, a session with you, Robin, um, or your colleagues at PlaceInTheSun.com currency um, over the next couple of weeks. Yes, we have uh, we have some Zoom chats available through the week uh, with the team, the guys here in the office. So if you'd like to have a chat with us uh, by Zoom or on the phone, we're very happy to do that. Um, and uh, yeah, we're here not normally here at the weekend. So, uh, but we have got some weekend sessions as well uh, if that's more useful for people. So uh, yeah, very happy to do that. Brilliant. Well, if you go to the exhibitor page on our A Place in the Sun um, digital, you can book a slot with a place in the sun.com currency. So thank you very much, Robin. That was really interesting. I now know a lot more about foreign currency exchange and I hope our listeners did. So um, um, I might see you later at the um, Conflab at the end of the day with all our, all our French experts. So thanks Absolutely. very much. All right, okay. Liz, thank you. Bye. Thanks everyone.